Hello, babies. Welcome to the 42 Show, the only show on YouTube that guarantees the divorce papers will be filed on time. What do you think? <laughs> I'll, I'll be getting divorced. <laughs> what are we going to do with the kids? I just meant mine. I, I filed mine oh, okay. on time. They came back stamped, and now they're on a frame on my dress, <laughs> in a frame on oh. my dresser. But <laughs> Okay, uh. there goes stream elements again. I don't understand. It does it every show. I'm, I, You're fired. Yeah. Um, Bloody troll. Sorry, sorry. So we should start right away with something I'm really happy to report here. That is an F-16 fighting Falcon and the first of the Ukrainian pilots being trained in Britain have graduated. So about bloody time. But haven't they got any? Yeah, well, their own. yeah. Um, the uh, as far as I understand, the planes are literally just waiting for pilots. So, mm. right. So, uh, yeah, first group of Ukrainian pilots to operate the F sixteen Fighting Falcon jets has graduated from British Military Flight School, marking a significant milestone in Ukraine's effort to modernize the air force. The ten pilots completed basic flying, ground school, and language training in the UK, and will proceed to advanced flying training with the French Air Force before transitioning to the F-16. So first major hurdle done, one more over. So, um, you know, um, let's see here. Uh, the initiative is part of uh, Air Compatibility Coalition led by the United States, Denmark, and the Netherlands aiming to bolster the Ukraine's defense or Ukraine's defenses, uh, old thinking there, um, mm -hmm. uh, capabilities against the Russian invasion. So... I just say faster, faster, faster. Please get them in their hands now because that is one mean looking beast. It's, a, it's got a lovely smile on its face. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's almost got the, the 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 little smile of a Mazda Miata in the front there, you know? <laughs> they have a bit that. faster. A bit yeah, faster than yeah, Mazda. yeah, yeah. Better in the corners, more cheese, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's great news. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I hope they get this going fast, 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 you know. Get mm. them in the get them in the hands of the people that can use them to actually destroy some orc shit. Yes. Yeah. So, um, is that the face of somebody or it, nobody? It, it could be the face of nobody, but uh, I'll tell you one thing, you won't know, because, uh, well, a man in Texas has made headlines by taking an unconventional step in the realm of American politics. Formerly known as Dustin Eby, this 35-year-old teacher and Army veteran from North Richmond Hills, Texas, has legally changed his name to literally anybody else <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's launched a campaign for the presidency <laughs> on his new name <laughs> oh he's got my vote yeah after after obtaining approval from a judge uh, for his name change literally anybody else wasted no time in acquiring a new driver's license and promptly filed the necessary paperwork to enter the race for the white house Literally anybody else stated, uh, this isn't just about me, literally anybody else, more so than an idea. We want to do better than the 300 million people for president. Yeah, how 300 million people. Yeah, we're going to He's gonna get the vote. Uh, he, he, he says, also says, there really should be uh, some outlet for people like me who are just uh, so fed up with this constant power grab between the two parties. And under Texas law, an independent candidate must submit a petition with 113,151 signatures, a very specific number. What? Uh, yeah. From, from, from registered voters who abstained from voting in the uh, presidential primary of either party in Texas and have got their clothes on the lower peg on Tuesday. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> If you it's voted very, on Tuesday, simple, yeah, if you voted on Tuesday between tea and supper, then you're not allowed to. But if you did it on Wednesday before your lunch, you're okay. It's what? what? No, not before cricket. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. But after having your nails done. <laughs> but his campaign's website underscores the symbolic nature of his candidacy. I mean, it's, it's kind of odd, though, because, you know, really, it's. Why not going to be a wasted vote, isn't it? You know, because he's he's not going to become president. So, well, okay, he's kind of like he's, he's doing that whole thing, or just like you know, um, you know, 
fouling up the system. Yeah, because here, here you're not wrong there. There is an argument to be said that these extra candidates that just waste votes so they don't go to the wrong person, what they should be doing is grabbing a platform like this guy just did and then voicing his support to one of the other to, like, he, he, in my mind, uh, you know, uh, it, it seems like he's, 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 he's coming across like he's picking on both sides. But I do mm. believe that he does actually have a side that he believes in. He just doesn't like how they're behaving, right? Because he talked about the bickering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I understand totally where he's coming from. Yeah, but uh, yeah, will it will help help things? I don't know. Yeah, will it highlight? Will it highlight the issue? Probably. Will people take any notice? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a few people watching now that have taken notice, but uh, mm, you okay. know, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's the argument there. Are you really doing anything or are you just getting in the way from, you know, votes that could have actually counted? Uh, that's a tough one, right? Yeah. But good luck you to know. him anyway. Yeah, yeah. And good luck to the people that they're trying to uh, find. There's six still accounted for in the Baltimore bridge collapse. Oh. Now, at first, my mind was like, you know, superhero movie, bridge collapsing, cars falling in the water, all that kind of stuff. But the crew knew they were out of control for whatever reason. I didn't fully read it. Um, I mean, you know, how much are you going to read in a day? But um, they were able to get a warning off. So the transportation authority was able to uh, get the traffic cleared and the bridge was not full of cars at the time. Hmm. Yeah, so they must have been on like a collision course and not been able to stop. I don't really know the the reasons for it, but um, I could read through here. But how much of this do you really want me to read, right? But it rammed a major bridge, and this is this is like screwed up a massive trade artery, and this is not like you know just a little covered bridge off to the side. This is a big deal. Yeah, it's a big old bridge. Yeah, um, I don't know the numbers, but. Judging by the look of the bridge, yeah, okay, it carries 11.3 million vehicles a year, so figure that out. That's a lot of people that need to go back and forth that are now screwed. But the the, the waterway is completely blocked, mm. right? Like, big vessels can't get through right now. And um, the, the mayor said, you know, first, you know, first and foremost is try to find the six people, get them while they're still, like, you know, alive, you know, and as survivors. But um, um, they'll be taking uh, investigators are looking into the records of the ship to try to figure it all out. You know, that's a crash location. Look, it's right at the high point right here. Let me just uh, see if I can get this to come in there. Yeah. I mean, that's that's right where the, the big boats need to go through. Right. Mm. Must be, you know, absolute nightmare. Um, oh, yeah. Some ad that's helpful. <laughs> that's not helpful where isn't there an actual picture yeah there's part of the bridge just collapsed on the container boat crazy man okay mm -hmm. here we can get some pictures this way how do i make this thing go away yeah there we go okay here we can check out some bridge stuff here hold on let me get that up on the thing for you proper um sorry my damn thing isn't working very well here here we go all right Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just wreckage. Look at that. Yeah, where's, where's the bridge? It's yeah. It's basically girders. Yeah, look. I mean, like, there's mm. supposed to be a bridge in that picture, and it's just mm. gone. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, oops. Yeah. Holy. Can you imagine, like, I hope the it doesn't turn out that, like, somebody was drunk or something. I mean, oh, man. But look at that. That's catastrophe. Oh, wow. You know, I really hope that uh, the missing people are found and whatnot. There, that's 13 of 13. That's the pictures done. So, mm. yeah, I'm sure there'll be news coming in and more excuses and findings and whatnot. But absolute catastrophe, man. That's That's major. And you don't just fix a bridge like that in a week no right no this is going to be a clusterfuck no for a while mm. yeah and I, I can't imagine them you know uh, i mean 
the six people who are missing, surely they would have turned up by now? The, I mean, that's a major, I mean, huge boats can get through. That's got to be dangerous water and stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't think it's looking very good, unfortunately. I'm sorry to say for friends and family, but I don't see yeah, that it's, ending it's, well. I mean, it's a huge stretch of water as well. It's, it's not just like a little river. It's just huge. Yeah, I mean, it's to me, it seems akin as from like trying to escape Atlantis by, or um, Atlantis, Alcatraz <laughs> by swimming. Good God. <laughs> Oh. Uh, this is where you come for all the, the straight facts yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no one's confused here yeah orca are you surprised i said something stupid orca orca <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a strange one a group of sperm whales off the coast of western australia employed a rather unusual strategy to escape the clutches of a pod of killer whales Marine biologist uh, Jenna Tucker recounted the scene, uh, describing how the uh, typically dominant sperm whales found themselves under attack by a pod of killer whales. Uh, the killer whales, uh, led by members named Wonks and Flapper, <laughs> how do they know their names? Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> circled tightly around the sperm whales, increasing the pressure. In increasing that's that, that's a new word. However, the situation took a surprising turn when a large dark bubble emerged amidst the huddle, uh, initially mistaken for blood. Uh, the bubble turned out to be a cloud of diarrhoea expelled by the sperm whales. Apparently a defensive maneuver uh, aimed at repelling the pre predators. Didn't um, they just the shit themselves? Are they sure it's a defensive maneuver? <laughs> well, this, 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 this was the question I was going to ask. We're going to die! <laughs> Yeah, apparently the uh, the tactic caught the killer whales off guard. Well, it would me too. Yeah, <laughs> um, prompt, that's a party prompt, I'd leave, you know. Prompting them to retreat uh, from their intended prey, yeah. You don't go near them, you dip filthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, wow, that's a strange one. It's like they're yeah. the skunks of the water. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, they, they, they do go into like you know sciencey, uh, you know, talk about it all. But yeah, it, it does, and and how how incredible this uh, this um, this tactic used by the whales was. But again, like you say, maybe maybe just like yeah, shut well, yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's a common joke if you're if you're in a car like going real fast and you almost wipe out, but you don't, and everybody say, "Oh, I bet you need to change your drawers after that mm. one," mm. right? You scare yourself shitless. Well, you know, yeah. In this case, we don't need to change their drawers; they need to change the ocean a little bit. <laughs> yeah, not a little bit. Four drunks in a bar watching that on TV could have figured it out. I don't think it took any study, you know. Wow, they were scared, you know. Like, mm. you know? Oh, but they went around and got samples and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible marine virologists. <laughs> uh, no taste testing, please. Mm. Um, so a little bit of a warning here. Um, be very careful on Discord right now, everybody, because... Hackers have poisoned the source code from the largest Discord bot platform out there. Now, on Discord, people use bots to automate things. Uh, we have some in our Discord, and uh, other people do as well. And this uh, bot community, over 170,000 members, has been impacted by a supply chain hack. And so all developers of bots that host their source code in this community have now potentially had their source code infected. And there could be bots out there stealing information and whatnot. Um, I'm just thinking of this now. I only found this about an hour before the show or whatever. So maybe we should make sure to disable the bots in our server for now. Apparently, apparently uh, note from uh, the shills, uh, we do not use that bot in the shills discord. Yeah, well, I know we only use like two or three different bots and they're not from these communities. They're specific ones. Uh, so mm. I'm pretty sure we'd be okay. But I mean, if you're in, if you're a member of a server where they just go crazy with bots that can do all kinds of stuff, be careful. Be careful. Mm. Make sure you got two-factor authentication turned on. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen a few of these discords like that. Yeah, 
yeah i tend i tend not to go with them any in them anyway but uh, yeah. tend not to go into any of them but yeah, yeah. and uh don't tickle grandma after midnight because uh it's, it's like that whole mogwai thing but mm. but yeah um it's stealing malware that's stealing sensitive information on users and it's going through uh it's malicious python packages all kinds of techno garble blah 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 but it <laughs> it means that it's low level in the code so you have to be very careful right now mm. Yeah, which just sucks. I mean, I swear to God, every time I go on a freaking microphone these days, I'm like, so you got to be very careful about this one. And it just never yeah. seems to stop. Yeah. You know, um, there is one other that ties into this that I wanted to bring up, um, you know, a, a twofer, we'll call it. Uh, but um, it's, um, MSNBC has got together with our CNBC has got together with somebody else. There was a survey done and... Cars are now the worst products out there when it comes to stealing your information. Uh, it's estimated at the rate it's going right now, by 2030, more than 95% of passenger cars will have hardcore telemetry built into them. And all of this information, because they're not just collecting it just so they know what kind of milk you like to buy or something, they're using it to make money. And by 2030, it should be worth an extra 250 to 300 or so billion dollars to the auto manufacturers just by stealing all your information. And we're already paying a fortune for new cars that are basically engineered to fall apart underneath you by the time the warranty runs out. And now we find out that everybody's double dipping hard and just completely screwing us over. So, you know, welcome to the modern world. Isn't it great to have all informed infotainment in your car? Maybe not. You'll, you'll probably get like a, a free car. You know, mm -hmm. like that TV. You can get a free, the free TV that just yeah. like, sends ads to you all the time. They should. Free car. <laughs> it should be at this point, right? The car should be almost free because they're making so much money off you using it. Mm. Right? Yeah, man. Not happy at all. You know, that's why I love older cars. Um, as long as you can still buy the parts for them, right? Yeah. You got to be a little bit picky, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, you know, I mean, I'm not saying go buy a 47 Ford or something, but you know, um, if you happen to have a nineties RX seven, I recommend you keep it. <laughs> so, well, my, you know. my model D four is working just fine. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Explain that to me, please. I will try. <laughs> a 59-year-old man from Thailand's uh, Chantaburi uh, province has stirred up controversy by consuming live lizards in a pursuit of enhanced sexual prowess. What? What? Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> does, that, does that make you more attractive to the ladies? <laughs> no. Uh, so my. I hope claims... they're not proportional in size to his tallywagger because that ain't. <laughs> no, that's not the problem, dude. You know? that's, that's, that's actually a 14 foot crocodile. That is. <laughs> uh, so my claims that ingesting live reptiles, live reptiles. Oh, provides... that's so much worse. That's so much worse. <laughs> Provides a significant improvement in his sexual abilities. Make 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 me wriggle. Uh, Probably this... makes his hand curl up tight. <laughs> this, this practice passed down from his grandparents has become a part of his lifestyle, despite his unconventional nature. Sumai himself advocates for the practice, asserting that rural lizards, which feed on small insects, insects are cleaner and safer to ingest than their urban counterparts. Oh, there he goes. A good tip there. Uh, illustrating this method, Sumai was documented cleaning a gecko caught from a wall with a soda before consuming it. Ah! A, ritual, a ritual he believes enhances its safety and efficacy. Yeah, right. Just chuck a bit of coke on it and, yeah, that'll make it... That'll clean it down nicely. But... Ah! Uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's doctors go into this and, you know, they talk about how, well, essentially lizard meat, you know, is a bit like, uh, you know, chicken. It's it's uh, high protein. It's supposed it's to crunch on the bones while it's wiggling <laughs> to get away from you, though. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the low calorie, low fat, low cholesterol nature of lizard meat is, uh, is, is, is yes, it is favourable attribute, attributes for uh, sexual health. Uh, but then, so is the Mediterranean diet with I'm, tomatoes. <laughs> I'm having fucking salad tonight. I'm just. <laughs> but but the doctors do warn against the uh, consumption of raw lizards due to the potential of transmission of bacteria and parasites, in, including Salmonella and E. coli and. I don't know, fleas for all I know. Oh, <laughs> lizards get fleas. I mean, but yeah, come off it. Fry them up first. Oh. Disgusting, man. Oh, yeah. it's so wrong. Yeah, oh. it is wrong. It is wrong. Talking oh. of wrong. Talking of wrong, Dick. Oh, we got a super chat. Hey, yeah, yeah. We got NA and A. And this is uh, not such a joke around super chat. So I'm actually just going to read it properly here. Uh, 10 bucks, too. Thanks, NA and A. Yeah. Hey, Dick, I'm planning on seeing the eclipse on the 8th in Vermont with my brother. He is a YouTuber with legit camera gear, and I'm hoping to get in touch with somebody who runs your Discord. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I would love to set something up if we can, NA and A. That would be awesome. That'd well, be we got awesome. Skits, we got Skits Crasher out there as well, isn't we? Right, and we probably can go from one to the other and have mm. a far, you know, like this would be really cool. I've actually got a little blurb on the eclipse coming up here in our show as well. So, ah. yeah, good shout out there, NANA. We'll have to make sure we're in touch for sure. I think I can find you on Discord somehow. Well, go, well, go to that bit of news now. That's what I'll do, actually. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find it in here. Is it that one? No. Yeah, here we go. So, how long will April's total solar eclipse last? Well, that depends entirely on this advertisement. It just pops up as I'm reading something. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it depends on where you are because as the, you know, Earth being a globe and everything, uh, you know, a sphere, same with the moon and stuff, as it the the eclipse, the uh, path of totality goes around the globe. You get a little bit more of a stretched out, oblique looking um, shadow or a bit more of a round one. So some places get it for a little longer than others. So scroll down here. Mexico has a path, uh, a total, like the longest duration of 40 minutes, 43 seconds. I think that's total, right? In the U.S., it's 67 minutes. And up in Canada here, it's 34 because, well, we're on the top of the curve and everything gets shortchanged up here. So, uh, yeah. And uh, so far as it is, we know we've got Skits Crasher in. And if we can get NANA and maybe one more person set up, we can probably give you one of the best broadcasts of the eclipse you've ever seen in your life right here on the channel. We should uh, we should feed the moon lizards so it'll last longer for everybody. <laughs> How do you make an eclipse last longer? Feed it live lizards. <laughs> Oh, man. I think I heard that on Ancient Aliens once, but I'm not 100%. I'll have to call Giorgio Tsoukalos and yeah, ask. It's, it's, it's true. I've said yeah. it, so it's now true. Uh -huh. Georgie knows it's true. Okay. So, um, oh, um, we do have the announcement we'll do here in a minute as well. But where are you taking us next on your little path of crazy? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're taking to a sweet corner of Britain called Sprouston, Norfolk, where a bus driver found himself embroiled in controversy after allegedly being caught engaging in a lewd act next to a double-decker bus, uh, all while still clad in his high-visibility jacket. Safe, humana, safe humana, sex. Humana, humana. <laughs> safe, safe sex, safe sex. He's got his high-visibility jacket. Wait, what, 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 what kind of a twerp goes out and does something like that? Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to put on my high-visibility jacket. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Deep. What kind of twerp goes and takes pictures of somebody getting a Hummer? Well, this, is the, this is the thing. An, on an, an anonymous user uh, loaded a photo to his Facebook. wife <laughs> <laughs> purportedly captured the illicit activity in progress uh, eating live, live lizards at the time uh, the image quickly garnered attention prompting authorities to launch an investigation into the matter uh, Norfolk police stated we are very aware of the incident of outraging public decency in Sprouston after an image was circulated on social media over the weekend. 
Authorities are now urging the person who took the photo to come forward as a crucial witness in the investigation. Hey, you perv. He's a bus driver who dropped his load at the corner of the block. I don't see a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is this, is this letting off millions of little passengers? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a spokesperson for First Group East of England, uh, the operator of the bus, revealed that the matter is currently under investigation, signaling the seriousness with which the company is taking the uh, treating the allegations against its employee. Mm. I mean, he can't exactly be done for exposure, can he? Because you know, it's been it's it's, it's been perfectly concealed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> Nothing, no, nothing's on show. The other person crouching down is just tying his shoe while doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Try, I'm trying to do your flies up with my eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> trying to do this with my reading glasses, and I can't get the right spot to see. <laughs> Oh dear God! I mean, oh. I mean, why, why, why did you do it just there? Why not, like you know, like a few feet to the left? Yeah, where you got a whole big bus, bus in the to way. stand behind, and you got perspective lines and everything, right? Why, why at this point, why didn't you jump on top of it to make sure everyone could see you? You know, why did he get off the bus? Yeah, well, why didn't he wait till he got home? I mean, there's just so many questions here. You know? oh, yeah. Dear. So, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's what happens when you don't have the correct fare to get on a bus, you know? Yeah. 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 So, in our, um, let's see, uh, what do we call it? Our, um, in our quest to make sure we make fun of everybody equally, and we've got to go to Boeing here again. As boing. the CEO, yeah, Boeing, uh, <laughs> the CEO and a few other people have stepped down amid this whole crisis in the company. Um, <laughs> and Ste stepped down, fell out of the door, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. One that was missing some bolts. But uh, <laughs> but here's the funny part. Now I rag on the stock market sometimes around here, right? So this is what happens. A few uppers at the very top of the company have now resigned over this, even though they have nothing to do with the actual building of the aircraft, right? It's lazy employees and shoddy safety and stuff. They're just the higher ups that decide crap that's different, but they've had to leave. What happened? The stock rebounded as soon as they announced that they're leaving. Wow. But the airplanes are still horrific pieces of shit that are about to kill people. But hey, they left the company. Woohoo! Let's celebrate, and everybody gets a new limousine. You know, it's 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 unbelievable, man. It's now, unbelievable. I've, I've heard stories of people at airports just walking away from their flight once they realize it's a Boeing they were about to get onto. That's right. That's right. And yet the stock market just rewarded this company. It's That's unbelievable. Insane. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, because we do like to make fun of people equally, and once again, we're going to make fun of the stock market as well here. Donald Trump and his truth social. Well, that merger with the other company we talked about has gone through. So now truth social has social has merged with this other company and has gone public on the stock market. And they got up to about $8 billion in valuation. Now, Truth That's Social, insane. it's so insane because Truth Social is nowhere near as big as like X and uh, Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And a third of the people on Truth Social are just there to see the dumb shit that this spray tanned idiot talks all the time. And he stands to pocket about $3.5 billion out of this. Plus, if the stock holds its value over the short term, then, by magic stock rules, they're allowed to issue a shit ton more shares, and most of them, by contract, go right to this fucking painted orange. So, this whole thing, he has floated a company that barely has made a dollar since day one, and he's going to end up with like $6 billion in his pocket on paper inside the next year for it. Mm, How does that make who, any sense to anyone? The man who's got no money yeah. to pay his bonds. 
Yeah, yeah. And he successfully got that bond lowered as well. So now it's only like 150 mm. billion or whatever million he has to put up. But yeah, I mean, you know. Um okay, we we only got 7 minutes left and the blurry pants have to be done. Blurry pants. Yes. Yeah, this is so fucked up. So on Monday, uh Korean Central Television uh, was showing an episode of the 2010 BBC series uh, of Gardening Secrets, featuring the famous UK gardener and broadcaster, lovely, lovely Alan Titchmarsh, the lovely little Alan there. Look at his little face. Uh, the show was said to be a, a condensed version of the original, and at one point the bro broadcasters blurred out Mr Titchmarsh's genes. Um, the Look right there. You see it all blurred out? <laughs> Is it because he's on his knees? I mean, no, it's because he's, he's got his cock out. Uh, yeah, in the scene, Mr. <laughs> in the scene, Mr. Tishmarsh is kneeling in the garden, uh, tending to plants uh, where the blurred effect is applied to his legs. Uh, it doesn't hide the fact he's wearing trousers, just obscures them. <laughs> The censoring is said to be linked to Kim Jong-un's regime efforts to restrict Western fashion and culture in North Korea. Blue jeans are said to be a sign of the West, decadent, and according to the outlet, have been essentially banned since the 1990s. Uh, this is this is despite the uh, country briefly exporting design what do they, jeans to Sweden. What do they have against <laughs> trousers that actually last? What's the problem? I don't no, get it. Jeans, this jeans. I mean, okay, if we're against blue jeans, why can they just like grade it? Just change the color. That'd be easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make them khakis, right? You know? Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, yeah, I know it's just trousers. Wow. Uh, I mean, how many other shows are they going to have to blur? Crying out loud. There's These never been just walking a around jeans on there's never been a time in history where a gardening show got blurred before that's got to be a first right <laughs> there'll, well. be, there'll be no no episodes of the fall guy shown <laughs> ever <laughs> yeah yeah double denim that is yeah, as well or um, yeah you'll never see jay leno in north korea because that's all he wears <laughs> right you know but thing is it isn't clear how north korea actually got hold of the tv show but the country has a history of illegally pirating neutral content like football yeah. matches and other tv shows just like putting it on their channel yeah. <laughs> just grabbing them off youtube <laughs> yeah yeah so okay real quick before we're done we also have an announcement to make here a contest thing but I wanted to make fun quick of uh, VJ Malia. He's an idiot who bought a Formula One team and almost ruined it. Uh, he's a super rich guy from India who basically screws everybody over he ever comes in contact with and now has been chased out of India because he owes billions of dollars and he's away hiding. And this is his house that was built on top of a 400 foot skyscraper and he's never once stepped foot in it and mm. i just wanted to make fun of him because he is the worst of humanity you're horrible vj fuck you and i hope everybody you've ever screwed over in your life is doing better without you in it i yes. hate that man it, it, it's, it's kind of odd. It, it really does look like a really bad ai picture but it's mm -hmm. not it's real it's like what yeah yeah, and he's he's unpaid employees for months and then bankrupted businesses and blah, blah. He's just the worst. But Theresa in the live chat threw in this article to me, and I wanted to get it up as well. So this chick here, um, she was an engineer with DuPont, and she decided that, you know, I'm sick and tired of being, you know, um, wondering if I'm getting screwed over by car mechanics and stuff. So she moonlighted on a second job to go and learn mechanics at different garages. And now her and some other girls have gotten together and they got the girls auto clinic founded and it's growing and growing. And it all starts because they used to go to this one place to get their oil changed because next door was a nail salon. So everybody could go and do their thing, you know, get your nails done and stuff. <laughs> so these girls have a nail salon and everything built in the garage. And it's just like, you know, when I go to the garage to get my car done, I don't even want to sit in the chair because there's a grease blob from the last asshole that was in it. I want to go to their garage. I want this, you know, well, about time. Done. I'm not going to get my nails done, but I'll have a drink with anybody <laughs> who is, you know. 
The funny thing is, now, the funny thing is, you know, at that uh, previous, uh, you know, garage, they should have sent the engineers, you know, the mechanics around because they've always got, like, you know, those black figures and, and yeah, all the oil underneath their nails that have been yeah, there for yeah. like thirty years. Exactly. <laughs> send them, send them right. around for a manicure. Yeah. yeah, and then you know, if this girl's the one giving you the bill at the end, you're not much going to be arguing like you would some greasy asshole, right? So I bet mm. they get paid top dollar. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Great idea. You know, uh, other garages can learn from that. Give us something to do, asshole. You know, it's a great thing. Um, and we have Easter. So here, let me zoom this in for you, everybody. Um, uh, you got to get into the Shills Discord, into the contest room to be a part of this. But uh, so there's going to be some challenges, uh, scavenger hunt, trivia and stuff. There's always a little prize or something or other that we do as well. Um, um, that chicken, that rooster up there is shitting an egg. So if you look closely there, top left, you'll see that. Um, and I think the one by the door just shit the pink one out. So you never know what you're going to find in these contests. So join us Lo in the Discord. Lots of cock. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got all the cock. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, join mm -hmm. us in the Discord, and uh, we'll see you there. Um, anything you want to get in here, dude? We got a minute before we're well, done. Get, get the last story, then. I'll all right. Really quickly. So a woman found herself in an unusual predicament after her plumber boyfriend orchestrated an unexpected parting gift following their breakup. He stole her toilet. <laughs> Must have been dating a Russian. <laughs> the woman decided to end her relationship with her boyfriend due to his frugal habits. Uh, she actually called him. He was the cheapest motherfucker he's ever met. And, uh, and his lack of consideration for service staff. Uh, while he packed his belongings, he inadvertently dozed off, only to awaken to the startling discovery that she was now left bogless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh that's it, funny it, yeah this, this, this guy seems like a real jerk you know he, he was he was cheap he he uh he reluctant he refused to pay uh service staff tips and uh didn't like paying bills so uh probably didn't buy that. the bog roll either <laughs> <laughs> but in in the meantime uh w without the toilet uh she's been resorted to making trips to a taco bell whenever <laughs> makes a pill. well mm. that's what starts the need to go to the bathroom quick so you might as well just stay there right thing is thing is there was, there was a sperm whale at the bottom of her stairs with its legs crossed <laughs> <laughs> uh, get out quick too funny <laughs> too funny so yeah we made it we're done we'll see you in a couple of days um be cool out there and uh thanks in the credits Bye-bye, everybody. Boom. Oh, everything fucked up there. Hey, everybody. So big thanks to our team, CF Beauty, in the live chat for the Shills account there. She runs the whole teams in the background and whatnot. And we've got Crazy Cat. We got the Kraut, BME, PJ, CNET, and... Um, um, I think I got everybody, did I? See it is N -A -N -A. Uh, well, yeah, N A N A, uh, yeah, N A N A. Um, uh, uh, anybody else? Dave Wardy, uh, Russian yeah. Cement, uh, um, Richard Stevens. I'm just, I'm just gonna read out all the names of the people who are here. But oh, anybody. and the guy that got the Hummer job, yeah, thanks to him too. <laughs> And th thanks to everybody who do super chats and you know donations and stuff like that. Really helps keep the lights on around here. Sorry, I'm gonna burp in a minute. I'm gonna hurry up. And we forgot Shana Caldwell. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, I did. Shana. Yeah, Finished okay. anyway. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, don't forget to hit the like. Uh, I'm going to like it right now. Bing! I've liked it, so you can do the same. And uh, don't forget to share it. Go and uh, yeah, go and find a, <laughs> a poor sperm whale and tell him to don't worry, just let it loose and come and watch the show. Let it wash all over me. <laughs> See you on the Discord with all the cops. Good night, everybody. Be cool out there. Bye.